Thank you for the introduction. Good morning, everyone. And today my talk is focused on the rehabilitation-induced cortical plasticity after stroke. In our laboratory, we study plasticity and uh, rehabilitation from years. And uh, I want to briefly give you an overview on the pathology first. Uh, stroke is a, a disease in which the, the reduction of the blood flow uh, leads to cell damage and cell death. There are two main types of, uh, of stroke. They are the hemorrhagic stroke in which the blood vessel is uh, disrupted and uh, the blood leaks into the parenchyma. And the other is the ischemic stroke in which a clot stops the uh, blood supply to the area. Um, they are recognized two area after the acute uh, phases of the stroke that are the core area in which the cell dies so you can do anything on it. But uh, the nearby area, the penumbra one, uh, is an area in which the neurons are still alive, are suffering but are still alive. And uh, on this area are focused all the re rehabilitative uh, um, procedure and uh, recovery rehabilitation treatments. There are two main strategies, acute strategies, uh, in the, for, for uh, the acute phase of the stroke. There are the reperfusion in the vascular approach in which you give the thrombolytics and the antiplatelet to the patients and uh, the neuroprotection in the parenchymal approach in uh, they are focused on uh, the reduction in the excitotoxicity and uh, radicals formation that are the main two reasons for cell die. Uh, the excitotoxicity is the phenomenon by which the, the tissue damage lead to leaks neuro, neurotransmitters into the parenchyma and all the nearby cells are excited and the overload of calcium leads the cell to die. And the radical, of course, are the, um, the, other, the other way by which the cell die. And uh, there are several million of people suffer for uh, strokes worldwide and um, in particular focal cortical strokes is one of the leading cause of persistent motor deficit and we are focused on this kind of problem and um, they are only partially recovered by a limited degree of spontaneous brain repair but this is often a maladaptive way to uh, in the spontaneous repair. So, um, in this slide, I want to summarize what, you, what is known on the mechanisms of degeneration and partial recovery after stroke, because uh, it's well known uh, the mechanism by which the cell die, but at the connectivity level, there are some, uh, uh, there are few information and uh, largely debunked. So, this is, uh, good slide to, to, to give a view, an overview of the problem. Um, in this cartoon here, you can see that, uh, um, for example, in a pyramidal neuron, cortical pyramidal neurons, after a stroke in which the blood flow decrease, the metabolic dysfunction and uh, the innovation and the disrupted neuron activity occur, all the synaptic connection with the ipsilateral neurons, uh, that is the red dots, are drastically reduced. And also this occur in the subcortical region. This is a cartoon representing a medium spine neuron in the striatum. And as you can see, the red dots drastically drop down. So um, after this drastic reduction in the cortical, ipsicortical connection, there are a reorganization. This is the connectivity plasticity. And uh, the restoration and reorganization with all these uh, features lead to a reconnection with uh, the survived neurons, and, but with an unbalanced connection between the ipsilateral and the contralateral 
projection. As you can see, the balance between the red dots and blue dots are changed. And uh, this is due mainly to the role of the contralesional, the, the, the last line, the contralesional neurons that uh, um, changes their connectivity with the transcaldosal axis projections with uh, the cortical and subcortical region in the penumbra of the lesioned hemisphere. So, uh, before the development of the advanced optical imaging technique, the only way to study stroke was on ex, ex vivo slide of brain. And this, in this way, it's impossible to follow an animal and the development of the disease and eventually the rehabilitation in, in, uh, in the same animal for a long time. But after the development of the advanced optical imaging, this is possible. You can uh, make a stroke in animal and follow their behavior and uh, their activity, cortical activity in particular, for all the time. So optical imaging allows investigating stroke and rehabilitation in vivo. And now I give you a, two, a couple of slides with two elegant experiment. The first is from Bauer and uh, collaborators in the 2014, and uh, they use intrinsic optical signals. The IOS are uh, signals uh, provided by the different absorption of the light between the oxygenated and deoxygenated hemoglobin. It's a sort of bolt fMRI, and uh, they perform in vivo intrinsic optical signal imaging showing reduced inter-hemispheric functional connectivity. In the first column, you can see the slide, the, the coronal slide of uh, the brain of the animals in the four um, experimental group, the control one, the first group in which there is a, a subcortical, only subcortical stroke, the second group is a cortical and subcortical stroke, and the third is half an hemisphere uh, damaged. As you can see, if you start your uh, analysis from uh, different point in the cortex, this is a, a top view of the cortex of the mice, and the, the, for your understanding, these are the eyes of the animal, and uh, if you start the, the analysis of your uh, imaging data, from different points, you can see that there are strong correlation in the homotopic control controlateral um, areas. And uh, instead, this correlation fade out by increasing the damage of the stroke. In uh, the worst one, you can see that there are no more correlation in the homotopic controlational hemisphere. So, stroke reduced interhemispheric functional connectivity. And this other example is from uh, Lim and collaborators, always, uh, again in the, um, 2014, they use VS, VSD, they are voltage sensitive dye, another te imaging, imaging technique. And these dyes are fluorescent dyes that changes the fluorescent intensity by, uh, when a changes in the membrane potential occur. So you can image the cortex and uh, follow the neuronal activation by imaging this kind of dye. And uh, they use optogenetic also, so they transfect the chandelodopsin in the control, uh, in the Ipsi regional uh, hemisphere. And uh, in the first line, you, you can see the sham, uh, the sham uh, experimental group in which there are strong correlation between the homotopic area in the two hemisphere. And uh, one week after stroke, you can see that all the correlation are fade out, but eight weeks after the stroke, there are a partial recovery of the correlation. These are all the quantitative analysis, but more interesting is the correlative map in which all the area are correlated and uh, the red square are, um, 
mean that they are high correlation, uh, these are correlation and uh, the blue one no correlation. And uh, as you can see, in the sham condition, there are a, this is the reconstruction of the connection in, uh, in the different brain areas, cortical areas. And uh, in, the, in the stroke, one week after stroke, there are no more correlation. And uh, eight weeks after a partial recovery, you can find some <coughs> correlation to that restored. And now I want to s briefly speak about the rehabilitation. Rehabilitation um, means many things. Uh, there are many kinds of rehabilitation, but uh, we are focused on the, on the robotic rehabilitation. Uh, the main advantages of this technique is that there is non-invasive, accurate, and uh, reproducible. Because in other kind of rehabilitation, you can't um, ac accurately uh, know the amount of work that you are, done, that you are doing. In, instead, in uh, the robotic rehabilitation, all these are uh, high reproducible, quantificable, and do it at home. Because you can bring the robot and uh, bring to your home. And uh, these are the main advantages. In our lab, we developed, a, in collaboration with Dr. Caleo and uh, Professor Michela, both from PISA, a the robotic platform for uh, the study of the rehabilitation-induced remapping after stroke. The platform consists, uh, it's, it's quite easy, and uh, co this is the video of the mice, in which the contralateral forelimb is located to the handle, and uh, a linear actuator stretch the, the forelimb uh, forward, and the animal have only to return to the ground. It's a very simple task, but is sufficient to study the rehabilitation, motor rehabilitation task. And uh, the animal learn very fast the simple task, and uh, the, the experimental paradigm is quite simple. We induced stroke by a systemic injection of the rose bengal. This is a photosensitive dye. And uh, after we eliminate the targeted area for uh, 15 minutes. Indeed, this dye clots when illuminated. So you can perform a very, very precise uh, stroke, this is a, a single blood vessel and this is a laser beam and you can see that uh, after the uh, 120 seconds the, the vessels are all clotted and, uh, all, and also like us you can uh, illuminate an entire area, we uh, need we spot the light on the motor cortex and uh, after the stroke, after five days from the stroke we performed 20 days of uh, rehabilitation sessions. So we have the platform, we have the animal with the stroke, and we perform multi-level imaging of rehabilitation plasticity, induced plasticity. We study functional plasticity with wide field mesoscale imaging. Interim spheric functional connectivity, as I said, is important to study the role of the transcalosal axonal projection, and structural plasticity with the longitudinal two-photon imaging in vivo. All these are in vivo. So starting from the first, I want first introduce the importance of the calcium ion. Probably you know, but um, the calcium, the intracellular concentration are very low, and Every time the neurons is activated, the calcium concentration changes in the cellular. So you have calcium transients. And by using uh, calcium dyes or uh, genetically encoded calcium indicator, you can image these changes. The calcium dyes consist in molecules like the FURA2 that changes their conformation and increase their uh, fluorescence following calcium binding. The genetically encoded calcium indicators instead are, are protein, 
that you can selectively express in a subpopulation of neurons. And uh, the mechanism is, is the same. When the calcium increase, they increase they for the fluorescence. And uh, the one of the most famous is the g camp that is a green fluorescence. And uh, by using this model, we perform simultaneous imaging of cortical activity and evaluation of motor performances during robotic training. In particular, this is Taiwan GCAMP 6. Taiwan means the promoter under which we put the GCAMP, so the calcium indicator. And this is a promoter for excitatory neurons, only excitatory neurons. So we can image the cortex of the mice and so see the, the, um, the activity by performing wide field imaging. Here I reported a, a video showing the uh, cortical activity in a healthy mice, mouse uh, performing the task in the robotic platform. As you can see, these are the bregma. The activity is centered in the motor cortex and are very restricted to the motor cortex. Instead, in a stroke animal, as you can see, the activation following the task, triggered with the, with the task, is spread all around the area. It's not more uh, restricted to the motor area. So these are the main results. And here I reported a, a single activation triggered with a single movement. And in the control condition, as you can see, the activation is restricted to the motor cortex. In stroke condition, they are spread all around the area. Instead, after our rehabilitative protocol, we can re partially restore the, uh, the profile of activation of the control condition. That we, we perform some quantitative analysis, for example, the, the delta T from the activation from the rostral and caudal activation, thus representing the, the um, the spread of the activation. And uh, as you can see in the rehab group, uh, you have restored, partially restored the, the, the selectivity of the activation. And the same from the peak amplitude, the slope of the, of the fluorescence activation. And uh, this is the, the starting point for the results that we had with the platform. And I, this is, this is the, uh, the results from only the ipsilesinal, ipsilesinal um, hemisphere. But uh, to study the connection with the controlesinal hemisphere, we performed interhemispheric functional remapping by uh, functional cortical, cortical connectivity, by, uh, sorry, by um, the development of a null optical interrogation of the network. So we transfected the chanerodopsin, a brief overview on the optogenetic, probably all of you know the, these techniques, uh, consists in, uh, in uh, activated by, activating by light uh, the ion channels, membrane ion channels that could be permeable to sodium or uh, chloride and some other ions. And you can activate or inhibit the, the neurons and uh, this is an example of chanerodopsin that is the same that we used. And uh, when you shed the blue light on the neurons, it starts uh, to fire. So you can control the activation of the neurons. And we transfected chanerodopsin in the controlesinal hemisphere in the same area, in the same primary motor cortex. And we, as you can see in the video, we um, study the interhemispheric connectivity. This is a, um, an example of uh, spontaneous activity. And then the white dot that appear is the stimulation of the homotopic uh, controlesinal area and uh, the triggered activation of the, the ipsi 
ipsilateral um, area. So uh, this is an example of control condition in which there is a good trigger by um, the, the stimulation and the activation. And um, we saw that uh, under um, one week after stroke and uh, all the weeks following, without the rehabilitation, you can't achieve a, a situation like that. So the integral mixed connectivity, as you, as you, as you, as I so, uh, show you before, um, they are disrupted. But uh, following our rehabilitative uh, protocol, you can restore also the integral mixed connectivity. And at the end, we study the structural plasticity, plasticity by performing longitudinal two photon imaging of synaptic remodeling in vivo. And uh, as you probably know, the Florence is the phenomena by which you, uh, the, um, you can excite a molecule to the excited state and it returns to the ground state emitting a f a photons. This is the fluorescence. And the two photon fluorescence is a technique that achieves the same, the same uh, um, phenomena in a non-linear way by the summation of two photons of less energy. So the main difference is, is that uh, with the two photons, you have only a spot of fluorescence emitted in the, f in the focal plane and not a cone of, uh, of um, photons emitted. So you can perform imaging in vivo and in depth. So for example, we imaged the two, three uh, layer, the two, three uh, in the motor cortex. And uh, what we found is that, uh, um, ah, sorry, the, one of the, the main advantage is that uh, you can perform longitudinal study by uh, orienting yourself with the blood vessel. And uh, we, we um, first uh, study the orientation of the, of the projection, and we found that in contour conditions they are spread all around, and uh, instead, in uh, the stro stroke uh, group, uh, there are a strong orientation of the projections. While under, uh, after our uh, rehabilitative protocol, we can restore the, um, the spread of the situation. But the main interesting uh, results was the one on spines, and we follow the spine for four days I, I want to stress this concept that you can follow the, the, the same dendritic, dendritic hybridization by mm, returning in the same area. And uh, we analyze the surviving fraction, that is the number of the, the spine that remain in the same place, the turnover, of course, as you can see in the in the red and green, there are formation and uh, elimination of spines, so the plasticity. And um, we found that, uh, again, the rehabilitation induced a partial recovery of this parameter. So the take home message is that uh, the robotic rehabilitation paradigm that we developed induced a structural and functional recovery. And the other main, main take home message is that uh, it's very important to understand that mul the multi-level mechanism uh, of recovery represent, um, that represent, a, in, our, in our opinion, to a multi-level approach is crucial for boost the rehabilitative treatments. And now I want to show you our future uh, perspe perspective. Uh, we are performing functional imaging with two photon microscopy on GCAM6 to study the activation because now I want to, uh, this experiment are not on GCAM but on GFP Taiwan. So they are not activity but they are only labeled in, uh, with the fluorescence because you are studying the structure. But if you want to study the activity, you can perform the same two photon imaging on GCAMP. So you are imaging the calcium transients. And uh, we perform this on, again on, in the motor area. 
and uh, in the layer 2 3 of the sum of, mm, sum of the motor area. And uh, here I report an image sequence showing the neuronal activation. Uh, it's, it's very low, the, the intensity. But uh, um, as you can see, we here reported uh, the fluorescence intensity traces obtained from the three, cell, st three neurons in the, in the yellow region of interest. And uh, on point four, the red one is the signal obtained from the larger area in which all the neuron contribution are, are averaged. And uh, we analyzed the power spectra of these signals, and we found that every neuron possess peaks of power around 0.4 hertz, because these, uh, these uh, mice are anesthetized and are anesthetized with ketamine, so these are slow oscillation. And um, this is the main range of frequencies showed by the population, average population activity. So, mm, in collaboration with uh, Alain Dexex from the CNRs, we perform uh, the correlative analysis under deep anesthesia in which we, there are clear, regular, synchronized oscillation, and under light anesthesia in which there are no more clear oscillation. And of course, we found that uh, there are strong correlation between neuron activity and uh, the field, that is the, the red one, while under light anesthesia, the correlation seems to fade out. So we want to reproduce the similar, similar experiment in the future with uh, sham operated and stroke mice to study the correlations between neuron activity in these two group, experimental group. Um, my interest, I'm, I'm involved in the HBP, in particular in the sub-project one and in the co-design project one. This is a slide to summarize what we've done in the co-design project one, in which our experimental data and the, the other, the other uh, produced from other groups, are uh, uh, aligned with the neuroinformatic platform and aligned with the Allen Brain Atlas in the context of the SP5. And moving from this point, uh, this aligned data could be used uh, in the SP6 for the simulation of cortical activity and thus in the SP10 in which mouse brain model, spinal cord and musculoskeletal model are, are um, uh, involved in the simulation of the mouse body. And uh, on the other hand, in particular with the uh, SP4, we want to, um, per, to develop a model of the calcium signals of these genetic encoded calcium indicators. So that's all. This is my collaborators and uh, I want to thank you for the attention.